In this episode, let's talk about the three main types of lights for video. That's going to be your LED, fluorescent, and tungsten. And there are pros and cons to each of them. So let's look at those pros and cons so that when you're making your next purchase decision on lighting, you'll be well informed and be able to make a good choice for the type of shooting that you're doing. Check this out. As I said, there are pros and cons to each of the three types of lights. Let's quickly look at each of the three types of lights for those of you that don't have a lot of time. And then for those of you that want to stick around, we'll go and take an in-depth look of the color rendering between those three types of lights to see the practical differences. First, let's look at fluorescent. There are lots of pros here. Again, lots of output, cool operating temperature, reasonable power requirements. You're not gonna be tripping circuits. The color's okay if you get the very best bulbs. There are various color temp options and there are reasonable price options as well. On the con side, the color is often not that great. There are usually green spikes, blue spikes, and yellow spikes in the color output. And while you might be able to get your skin tones right, other colors are gonna look off when you do that. There are a few spotting options, almost all the lights are flooding, and there is mercury exposure if you break the bulbs, you and you dim these by turning off individual light bulbs. On the LED side, these are pretty similar, but a few advantages here. Output lumens, about the same. Coolest operating temps, great power options. You can usually battery power these. Small and portable, long-lasting bulbs, various color temp options, and most are dimmable. On the con side, again, very spiky color, and even worse, it varies a lot by manufacturer. The only good one I've seen out there is the Airy L7 series, Fresnels. They cost about $2,700 US. And in general, these are more expensive than your tungsten or fluorescent. And then on the tungsten, these have great output in terms of the amount of light. These have the best color rendering. And we're going to look at that in more detail in just a minute. And lots of reasonable price options on the con side. They're very hot, uncomfortable for your talent. They're fire and burn dangers. Use tons of power. The bulbs have to be replaced quite often. You have to use gels to mix it with daylight. And the dimmers change the color temp. So they're a very different beast to work with. I wanted to take a look at the, what is the practical difference. Now this is not a perfect test, obviously, because I've got a particular LED kit, I've got a particular fluorescent kit, and a particular um, tungsten kit, but the question is, is in general terms at least, what's the difference between these? Now the fluorescent kit I'm looking at is the ePhoto 4500 watt softbox kit. I've talked about this one and reviewed it in the past. If you're curious, I've got a link down below. Second one I'm using is an Airy Fresnel clone. This is a tungsten light. It gets very hot, uses a lot of power. It's a 650 watt bulb in there. Um, and I'm actually just using a work light, one of those things you pick up at the Home Depot or a hardware store as my backlight. So that one's actually has a slightly different color you'll notice back here, but Hopefully that won't affect the test too much. And then finally, I'm using an LED light. Now, LEDs are all over the board in terms of the, the research I've done. It looks like um, every LED unit that you pick up has a slightly different color response, and, and it's kind of interesting. But we'll look at that last. Main question I have really is between the fluorescent and the tungsten. Why would you ever even bother to consider tungsten? And I think most people these days are like, eh, not really, there are too many downsides. And let's see if there's any difference in terms of color rendition or color rendering. So that's really my main question here because I'm looking mainly for something to be used for interview style and let's take a look. Okay, here we have our fluorescent and here we have our tungsten. Let's just start with those two. We'll, we'll come back to the LED at the end here. These two are a little different in terms of exposure, but let's first of all just check the white balance on each of these. Before I shot each of these clips, I did a custom white balance using my camera, and we can test that. We're just gonna, um, down here in the curves tool, we use our eyedropper, capture a point there, capture, and that's our gray, our middle gray, here in our highlights, and then over here in what should be our darkest shadows, or our blacks. And let's take a closer look here. These should all line up, the three channels should line up. So the red, the green, and the blue in the highlights line up the red, the green, and the blue in the midtones lineup, and the red, the green, and the blue in the shadows lineup. So this is a white balanced image, so that's great. And then let's take a look at the tungsten image, same thing. Let's get our midtones, our highlights, and our shadow. Take a closer look there. Looks like our highlights are pretty close there. That's good. Our midtones likewise close and our shadows close. So we're also white balanced there. Bringing it back to the fluorescent. Now, in practical terms, let's go and let's add back the contrast. I shot with a flat picture style, so let's add back the contrast like I normally would. So I'm going to drop my lift here until I see these uh, shadows actually approach here. I want to crush the dark, the black background. I'll bring my highlights up 
like where I might expect them. And then you can see in the waveform here, this, uh, this white part here is our gray card, and that's right there in the middle, halfway up. So that's perfect because this is a gray card, which is <laughs> supposed to be halfway up the middle. So that's, that's good. That's at a practical level. That's how I would normally finish my video clips and in this kind of scenario. So that's looking great. Let's go to our tungsten now. We'll do the same thing here. This one is not exposed quite as brightly. Um, it's maybe half a stop lower, so we'll just have to do, just pull things back up to where we might expect them. And just need to bring our gamma up a touch to get that gray card in the middle. Somewhere right around there. Okay, very good. The question is, do you notice much difference between these two? This is the fluorescent and this is the tungsten. Fluorescent tungsten. The difference I can see, you can definitely see in the skin tone here. This one looks like a little paler and a little, little more red. And to be honest, that is actually closer to my real skin tone in real life, <laughs> for better or for worse. Um, this one seems to have a little bit more, I can't tell if it's yellow or green, one of the two in there. Um, but it shouldn't, you know, again, we, when we looked at our white balance, the, we were definitely white balanced and that green channel was right in line with the others. So there I think is one of the differences, but here's the thing that bugs me the most. And this was actually from, this is where this episode gets a little bit uncomfortable, at least for me, uh, a while ago, probably a couple months ago, someone left a comment on one of my videos and said, Hey, Curtis, love the videos, learning a lot from them. They look really good, except for one thing, your teeth usually look yellow. And uh, I, was, I looked back at some of them and I went, yeah, you know what, you're right. And then I got kind of self-conscious. I do have good, <laughs> for the record, I do have pretty good oral hygiene. But several years ago, you know, I'm not going to lie, my teeth are not sparkling perfectly white. A um, number of years ago, I did drink a lot of uh, peppermint herbal tea. But let's just, let's just take a look and see if this is realistic. So I'm going to just take a reading right there. So we took a reading there and... When I take a look at this reading here, what we're looking for is a difference between the red channel and the blue channel, just in terms of the number of squares. And you can see here, oh, our blue channel is about right here. So we're looking at one, almost two, almost a difference of two of those squares, maybe one and three quarters. So that's that one. Now here's our tungsten. Do a reading there. Whoops, let me just reset this. Do a reading there. The same spot. Take a closer look at those. This one's closer to one and a half, maybe just a little less than one and a half. So one and three quarters versus one and a half, not a huge difference, but to me, that looks closer to my real teeth color. You know, again, not perfectly sparkling white, but not quite as yellow as it's showing here in the fluorescent. This one looks more natural to me. So what's the moral of the story here? I'm not trying to suggest that you need to buy one type of light versus another. This is just my own research here. And, you know, to be perfectly honest, if color critical is not your number one priority, then I think these fluorescent lights are just great. Um, but if that's kind of bugging you, and in, in my case, I do a lot of, you know, again, my I'm doing primarily kind of corporate videos, interview style, talking head. And for me, it's mostly going to be people. And so I really need those colors to be pretty close to reality. At least start there and then I can stylize them with my color grading from there. If you're going for a heavily graded look anyway, this may not be as big of a deal for you. So just something to keep in mind. There are some practical differences it looks like between fluorescent and these are relatively high CRI bulbs, the fluorescents. These are, they're, they're rated at 90 plus. So um, there is a little bit of a difference there. Again, in the skin tones as well. So if I need my skin tones to be more realistic. Tungsten seems to win there. Let's take a quick look at LED just to see if there's a difference there. All right. This one now, a little bit different here. This is a photo deox. I think it's a 308 LED. Um, so it's really relatively small. It's not normally something I would use for a key light. And I don't have a second one that I could use for a kicker just to kind of finish the look. But nevertheless, this is, this is kind of where we're starting here. And let's just do the same thing here and check our white balance just to see just to confirm that we're we're lined up here. So here's our red, green, and blue highlights. We're good there. Mid-tones again, and the shadows. We're pretty close to crushed already. So that's, um, it looks like we are white balanced, so that's good. Let's go ahead and do the normal grading that I would do. Again, I'm gonna take this little shelf here and we wanna crush that because we want that black background look, that kind of infinity black background. Without going too far, there we go. Uh, bring those highlights up. 
And then we want our middle gray card to be right in the middle. And it looks like based on the waveform, we're right there in the middle. So this is about where I would grade that. Let's go ahead and take a reading on the teeth again here. And look at the difference between the red and blue channels. Yeah, again, it's about one and three quarters, almost two. So we're definitely seeing more yellowish in the teeth here as well. So again, not a huge deal. This is something interesting. And the reason I wanted to do this test is I actually read some things. The Motion Picture Academy uh, has a division that actually does research on lighting. They did some research. And what they did is they actually went and looked at these different types of light sources and plotted the chroma output of each of these different types of lighting um, sources. And obviously they had to do averages because every unit's a little bit different from the other. But what they found is, I can show you this graph here, is that for tungsten lighting, there's obviously a smooth curve. That's kind of one of the big benefits of tungsten. And, you know, despite all of its other downsides, that is one benefit. Um, but look here at daylight, white, balanced, and I put those in air quotes, um, fluorescent lighting, you can see, and this is no surprise to anyone, there's a massive green spike. We all knew that, and we always, you know, kind of do our custom white balance or, you know, post correction to make sure we don't look green. But did you also know there's a blue spike, typically, and there's a yellow spike as well, which might explain why the teeth come across as a little bit more yellow in this little test that I did here. Likewise on LEDs, there are a ton of different LEDs and you can choose a variety of them here in this. There's a little app that they've released. If you wanna to go to the um, App Store, I'll put a link for that. But this App Store lets you kind of compare the different light sources. It's a free app. It only works on iPad, I believe. So gotta have an iPad to make it work. But nevertheless, LED lights, they have a whole bunch of different types of LEDs. And you can notice that the, the LEDs are all over the board as well in terms of the different spikes that they have. So. All this to say, number one, brush your teeth. And number two, um, if color critical work is your number one priority, you might want to look at tungsten. If not, and you're willing to take that as a trade-off, that's okay. That's totally legitimate in some circumstances. Um, if the benefit of having very portable battery-powered lighting is important to you, LEDs may be your best bet. So hope that was helpful for you. Thanks for checking out this episode. If you haven't subscribed already, go ahead and do that. We'll be sure to get you more great videos on how to improve your lighting and sound for video. Talk with you soon.